Brown main event here with PBC on FS2, Marcus Brown and Lenny Castillo. Our table tape brought to you by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. Caleb, what stands out to you? Marcus, you know he's got an extensive amateur background, went to the Olympics, 2012 Olympian. He's fast, he's explosive, he's strong. Um, Castillo, you know, a tough competitor as well. Like I said earlier, he's going to have to get in there. He's going to have to try and frustrate Marcus, pull him out of his element, uh, trying to make him make mistakes and capitalize on him. As for Marcus, he's just going to have to go in there and, and do what he does uh, every time, you know, this led up to this fight. Just stay relaxed, box, look for big shots. Ladies and gentlemen from NYCB Live here in Long Island, New York. Premier Boxing Champions now features the main event live on FS2. Ten rounds in the light heavyweight division. Introducing to you first fighting out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the black and the blue. His professional record stands at 17 wins. A dozen of those coming by way of knockout against one loss and one draw. Joining us from Santo Domingo, República Dominicana. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, presentando Lenin Castillo. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the white trunks, shrimp with the black. As a professional, his record is perfect. 21 bouts, 21 victories. 16 of those coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of Staten Island, New York. He is the 2012 United States Olympian. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown undefeated at 21 at home. Battling Lennon Castillo, referee charges Benji Estevez, Ray Flores, Caleb Plant. It is the main event, PBC on FS2. Hey, don't go away. PBC on Fox comes your way at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific time. The main event, Andre Berto, Devin Alexander. Still more bots remaining, but this is our feature bout right now on FS2. As Marcus Brown ranked number two in the world in light heavyweight division, so a lot of pressure on him to come out and get this victory in a decisive form. Absolutely, not just wanting to get the win, but you know, do it in an impressive fashion. Well, last time Marcus Brown was here in at NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veteran Memorial Coliseum, he starts Shawnee Monahan. So he's looking to do exactly and replicate that performance against Lennon Castillo. Right now, Marcus is dictating the pace a little more, keeping his foot on the outside, which is going to set up shots like a straight left. He's using his feints up and down. And also, Marcus Brown seems to be the bigger of the two. I mean, there is a significant size advantage for the 27-year-old out of Staten Island. Taking the slow, working on setting things up, filling each other out. Nice straight left back connected by Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown uncorking a combination. On Great body Lenny shot Castillo. as well. Great body shot by Marcus as well. Every time Marcus goes to try and set something up, Castillo takes a step back. So Marcus is just going to have to find his range, stay relaxed, not get frustrated, and uh, know it'll come. Lenny Castillo seems to be very dry as well as we see. There is some sweat that Marcus Brown has obtained based on warming up in the back. And you want to go into a fight warm, Lenny Castillo does not appear like he's warmed up. That's the same thing I was... I was thinking when he took his jacket off, took the shirt off. Seemed a little bit dry. Marcus seemed like he warmed up. You know, it was a little more warm. And when it comes to, when you, when you discuss that whole item about warming up, does that allow your punches to come out more fluidly? Do you feel more comfortable? Is that why you guys decide to do that? Or is it more a mental thing? Uh, you know, I hate to speak for everyone. Everyone's got their own thing. But, uh, but for you, as for me, you know, I like to warm up good. Uh, you know, break a sweat. I feel like uh, more relaxed. 
not as tense or tight. Um, everything's already flowing by the time that I get to the ring as opposed to using the first couple of rounds to do that. And right now, Marcus Brown looking to hammer away on the body of Lenny Castillo. He mentioned in the interview with Jordan Hardy that he thought that he was very soft in the middle and he's going to attack the body of Lenny Castillo. Final stages of our opening stanza. That's the end of round number one. We'll come back with round two. Yeah. Welcome here. back to PBC on FS2, Marcus Brown. There we see the 2012 Olympian who believes that the Zab Judah was a very big influence on him growing up here in the New York area. And Zab Judah really made a name for himself, actually fought Floyd Mayweather as well. Multiple time world champion. Yes, a lot of, a lot of history in New York. First round, not much action. Both of them trying to set stuff up. Every time Marcus goes to set something up, it looked like Castillo was stepping back, and Marcus wasn't winning the reach, which was very smart. Marcus Braun started boxing at age 13. Using his jab is Marcus Braun, but they're both sort of in this feeling out process. But the problem, the thing is with Marcus Brown, he can turn out your lights pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely one punch knockout power. Um, but they're both big dudes, uh, you know, good records. So, you know, Marcus isn't one to reach or lunge in there too far. And good power something himself. So. Casillo looking very relaxed. Last time we saw Marcus Brown was back on January 20th. He beat. Francie Nutetu by first round TKO. That was on the undercard of Errol Spence and Lamont Peterson. There's just over a minute has come up with oh, nice shot. Oh, Lenny Castillo very tense, whereas Marcus Brown seems to be more relaxed. Good exchange there. A couple of seconds ago. Somebody in front of you is going to have to respect him. It's gamesmanship. Well, Marcus Brown not fully really, really extending on his jab. And with Marcus Brown still staying on the outside. Round number two, still trying to fill each other out. You know, take tendencies down from the other one. That's the end of the second. And there's a little bit of a jab at the end, but let's take the action picked up as you're watching PBC on FS2. Welcome back to PBC on FS2. Marcus Brown there, being spoken to by his corner, Gary Stark. Marcus Brown with that left hand right to the midsection of Lenny Castillo. Marcus Brown looking to keep his record perfect. Right, number two in the world, Caleb. When you are ranked that high and you're fighting a guy that is not ranked higher than your world champion, what goes through your mind? Uh, just uh, you know, you want to fully prepare for it as a 
it was a world championship fight. Me, personally, you know, I've tried to treat every fight as if it was a world championship fight. Because that's the only way you get to a world championship fight. Uh, Marcus has done all the right things leading up to this point. And now he's just got to keep his calm, keep his cool, you know, not get pulled out of character too much. And uh, set his shots up, box smart. He's young, he's explosive, he's athletic. He's got a good ring IQ. And uh, he's got to put it together. Not allow Casillo to frustrate him too much or, you know, pull him out of his element. And it has come off the clock here in the third. Straight left by Marcus Brown. But also, if you're Marcus Brown, you don't want to allow a guy like Lennon Castillo to hang around. That's something that you do not want to have happen because you don't want it to cost you in the end. Lennon Castillo, 18-1-1 with 13 knockouts. Lennon's chasing down Marcus Brown. Oh, and a shot down below the belt. And that hurt. And incidentally, Lennon Castillo represented the Dominican Republic in the 2008 Olympic Games as a welterweight. Here's the shot below the belt. Oh, yeah, very much so. Way down south. Just over the midway mark of round three. Lennon Castillo, Brown is the fourth undefeated fighter that he has fought. He is two and one against his previous three undefeated fighters. Nice straight left to the abdomen by Marcus Brown. Couple of body shots. Both fighters hauling that front hand out there, touching each other's glove, trying to you know, find an opening. Set something up. Straight left, right to the midsection by Marcus Brown. I don't know if this is it's only about going on the seven month layup for Marcus Brown. Do you think that, that might be affecting him at all, Caleb? Because he seems to be just a stronger star than what we've seen here thus far. Yeah, I don't know. You know, he could just be trying to set up big shots to get him out of there early. Uh, you know, it could be from the seven months. Let's well. welcome back BBC on FS2. Here's a look at Marcus Brown last by fights. The victory first round stoppage over Francie Netetu. Here in Long Island, a second round stoppage over Shawnee Monahan. A knockout victory over Thomas Top Dog Williams in Cincinnati. But that split decision victory over Adivoye Kalajic over two years ago is what woke Marcus Brown up and said, I have to be more aggressive. Some people doubted Marcus Brown, believing Kalajic got the victory. Brown took the W and really started to be more aggressive. And he feels that that has helped him get to where he is now, ranked number two in the world in the light heavyweight division. Like you said, after that split decision, it seems as if he picked it up, wanted to be more active, you know, put more, a stamp, put more of a stamp on his, uh, his wins. And here to you know, it's been a little bit of a filling out process, but it seems like both guys are starting to get warmed up, let their hands go. Over. Right now, Marcus, he seems to be the one getting on first with his jab, landing his jab. So uh, I've been edging out the round slightly to him. Nice jab for Marcus Brown. Lennon Castillo has never been past nine rounds in his career, only been the ninth round once, and that happened in his last fight. And now we'll send it to the third member of the broadcast team. Here's Jordan Hardy. Great, thank you. I was over in the corner of Marcus Brown, and his trainer was telling him, hey, in this round, you need to come out and be vicious. And he was kind of taking his time being patient, so we'll see if he comes forward. They're reminding him to keep those punches up just so they don't get any points taken away and just stick the jab. Ray? Caleb, do you agree with that assessment? Uh, yeah, you know, come out a little stronger, try to um, seize the round, take the round, put more of a stamp on it. Uh, you know, Castillo, he's long, he's got experience. Maybe uh, Marcus in the beginning rounds having, you know, slight difficulty in getting past that. But as the rounds go on, it seems as, as if he's finding his distance a little more, his rhythm, his timing. Marcus Brown. 
Now he goes to conventional. He's typically softball. Now he goes back. He's been switching up his stances as Marcus Brown as we approach 70 seconds field here in the fourth. Marcus Brown stepping right to Lenny Castillo. Nice jam. Castillo hasn't been throwing anything significant, Caleb, either. So it takes two to tango and to be able to mix it up and, and engage. Brown is the one that's doing it. But Brown isn't doing it for, for long periods of time. And Castillo, I don't even think he's doing hardly anything. Yeah, Marcus, you know, doing his spurts, sitting down his punches and spurts, throwing combinations and spurts, but uh, nothing too consistent as far as Castillo, like you said. Yeah, you know, put hardly anything out there with bad intentions. I don't know if he's waiting to see if Marcus is going to get tired if he's going to get tired he's going to fight. But. Come on now. Marcus. Bringing it to this game. Welcome back. BBC on FS2. Marcus Brown and his entire team. And let's take a look at your unofficial scorecard. Caleb, how do you have the fight scored thus far? Uh, right now, I'd uh, solidly edge out every round to Marcus. Uh, he's being more busy whether he's landed uh, big shots yet or not. He's uh, he's the one wanting to press the pace, uh, make a fight out of it. It just so happens that Castillo hasn't been interested so far. But when you're dealing with that, I mean, is it one of those things, does it make it easier for you to go out and to try to wipe them out, or does it make it more difficult? Uh, it just depends. You know, styles make fights. Uh, different people have trouble with different things. Um, right now, it just looks like Marcus is doing his first, but at the same time, he's not going to run into anything. He was noticing about a, a spot in the ring that might have been a little, when it comes to bad leverage. Lenny Castillo coming forward, and I know that the crowd is getting restless here, largely in part to the lack of action from Lenny Castillo. I'm surprised that Marcus Brown isn't attacking the body as he told Jordan Hardy earlier in the pre-fight interview. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's uh, maybe getting caught up and wanting to catch him with something big up top. There's a great body shot right there. Um, but what, but yeah, it'd be nice to say maybe go just, just, just a little bit more to the body, and some of those body shots might open up shots up top. Right hand, left hook, it seems uh, 
Seemed like a clean knockdown. Here's a third look at it. Right behind the ear. Boom. Seemed like a clean knockdown for Lenny Castillo, and it was judged correctly. It was ruled correctly. Clean right hand left by Castillo. There doesn't seem to be any panic in the corner. No, I don't think Marcus was too hurt by it. Maybe just uh, caught him off guard, knocked him off balance. Uh, seems pretty comfortable. Ray Flores, Caleb Plant here ringside. Don't forget. And now let's send it to the third member of a broadcast team. Here's Jordan Hardy. Thank you, Ray. I was over in the corner of Marcus Brown, and his trainer does not seem too happy. He is yelling at him, hey, you are not listening, man. You need to start listening. You've got to control this fight. You're better than this guy. You've got to have sharp jabs, and he wants to see the one, two, hook. He also said that, uh, you know, you've got to stay focused because I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Marcus Brown is kind of looking over his corner every now and then instead of at his opponent, so that's pretty interesting to me. Caleb, have you ever had an opponent that you noticed they were looking at their trainer? Uh, yeah, definitely. Sometimes it's, it's weird. They'll look out to the crowd, they'll look up to the clock, they'll look to the corner, and um, you know, you got to stay zoned in. you got to stay focused uh, looking at your opponent because you never know what's going to happen. Um, right now, Marcus Brown is in a tussle with Lenny Castillo. Looked like he was winning every round up until the fifth when he was put down with the left hook behind the ear. Hey, don't forget, all of our fight action continues right after this on Fox starting at 7.30 Eastern. The main event featuring former world champions Andre Berto and Devin Alexander that comes your way at the bottom of the hour live on Fox. Cannot wait for the card from right here in Long Island. Fights have been fantastic here on FS2 and it only continues to heat up on Big Fox. Right now, Marcus Brown is hoping to get a big victory over Lenny Castillo. It seemed merely academic a few rounds ago. But how quickly a punch can change the dynamic of a fight. Marcus Brown using his jab. of the round. Marcus Brown seems to regather himself. And that ends the sixth. Back in the corner of Marcus Brown, Gary Stark Jr. and Sharif Unanda. And in the corner of Marcus Brown, round number seven, getting ready to commence. Aside from that knockdown, Marcus Brown has looked solid. Could he look better? Yes. But I think he was cautious and he really got woken up when he was put down on the canvas by Lennon Castillo in the fifth. Yeah, he was uh, relaxed, composed, you know, just looking for, looking to set up big shots. But after he got uh, knocked down, it seems like he may be a little bit more cautious, just to, doesn't want to run into anything, which is smart. But at the same time, he's got to make sure he's letting his shots go, he's his work off, and uh, you know, be in the region. Marcus Brown, undefeated, looking to take his record to 22 0. Taking on Lennon Castillo. Castillo to the Dominican Republic. Exchange and again throwing close quarters. And just that is Warren's Castillo box leading with the head. Castillo. 
Castillo, 18, 1 and 1. Managed by the veteran. Just one blemish on his career. That being a majority decision loss to fellow undefeated fighter at the time, Joseph Williams. It was in February 2017. As we are nearing 100 seconds to go here in the seventh. At the same time, in this particular fight, Caleb, because there is so much that is on the line, if you lose, you run into something, that it's just better to be cautious and say, am I gonna look aesthetically pleasing to the crowd? No, but I just need to get the W. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, the situation of a fighter, sometimes it's better to just, you know, get the win and, and move on to see another day. But uh, with this guy, Castillo, he, you know, he's got some sharp punches, but, uh, I don't think he's on the level of Marcus. He, he's, Marcus is using his feints. Um, I'd like to see him work off the feints just a little bit more, but nice straight left by Marcus. Solid jab by Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown coming forward. They tie up. Nice left hand to the bottom. Left. By the moments of the seventh round. And that concludes the seventh. Welcome back to BBC on FS2. Marcus Brown undefeated with a 21 in both record. Don't give him that chance. Taking on Lennon Castillo as we approach the eighth round. What have you seen thus far out of Marcus Brown, Caleb? Uh, definitely some fast, explosive shots, but uh, a lot of things have been in spurts. You know, he's worked his feints up and down. Sometimes he's worked off of them, sometimes he hasn't, which is good. You don't want to do the same thing over and over. Guy Steele starting off strong with the right hand. Marcus Brown still moving forward, throws a nice straight left at close distance. There's a right hand, right hook by Brown. Dig into the body, and Benji Severs is going to have to get them away from each other. Brown looking to step in with that jab. Nice checkup by Marcus. 
And it's not like Castillo was buzzed with anything vicious. It's Castillo who's just not willing to engage in the natives here in Long Island are being wrestlers based on what they perceive to be a lack of action. Yeah, I'm not sure if Castillo is sitting back waiting to pick up some of the big, but you know, yeah, he definitely hasn't put much together so far. And it's not working, because he's losing with the exception of that fifth round every other round after that. And that ends the eighth. Going to the corner of Marcus Brown. Marcus, come on, man. Oh, give it on the round. Yeah, baby. Enough, enough firing down the man. Why are you waiting for him? Why, okay. man? He's not that good. He's that good to wait for. Uh -huh. I you're know, fucking I know with you. You're fucking with your own head. But at the same time, you're letting him fight the round, bro. Okay. Don't fucking do that shit. Don't do that shit. Don't man. do that shit. Don't do that come back with the short round. Y a lo que queda ya. Ahí, ahí. No queda nada, vamos, quedan los rounds de pelea. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Los rounds de pelea queda, vamos. This is a family show, ladies and gentlemen. We certainly apologize for the language. And you can tell that they are upset though about Marcus Brown's performance. You keep throwing your you're fighting panic mode. Go! Look at me. One, two, let's go. There you see Marcus Brown, round nine. This one is scheduled for ten. Round the undefeated 2012 United States Olympian, ranked number two in the world in light heavyweight division. And let's take a look at Caleb's unofficial scorecard. We have 77, 74 for Marcus. Yeah, Marcus round, round coming out uh, early, you know, slightly edging out the rounds, being slightly the, the ring general, throwing a few more combinations. But, um, you know, Castillo, he's starting to do a little bit more. I, I feel like um, it's more so Marcus. Just not putting things together more so than it is uh, Castillo taking the rounds, but we'll see how things come out. Marcus Brown ripping to the body of Lenin Castillo. Uh, maybe feint to freeze him and then work off the face, but not just with a jab or, you know, a, a 
straight left with any, you know, one, two, three combination, put them together, start down low at the body, working his way up top. Um, get Castillo to shell up, and once he shells up, you know, let out more combinations, stuff like that. What about Valente Castillo? What does he need to do in order to win this 10th round definitively? Uh, he's got to let his hands go. He hasn't done much the whole fight. When he has let his hands go, the, the few times he has, he's had great success. You know, good success, landing clean shots. Um, so, you know, he just needs to do that a little more, or a lot more, actually. Lenin Castillo just seems to be very disinterested. Yeah, he has not been interested in pressing the action or you know, opening up too much. This is the 10th and final round between Lenin Castillo and Marcus Brown, as Brown has an undefeated record. With 16 knockouts on his dossier. And Lenny Castillo, he's down significantly in the scorecards. He's got to do something very significant. Now Castillo just sort of barely into Marcus Brown. Marcus falling in a little bit on those left hands to the body. And then so afterwards he smothered himself. He's not able to get off any, on anything else. And Castillo's tying him up. He's having those little pity back shots. Um, I'd like to see him keep his distance just a little bit better on that left hand to the body. That way maybe he can bring the, the right hook up top or, you know, get off some better combinations or a couple more combinations. Midway point of round number 10. Like that, just like that. He didn't follow him with his left hand and he was able to bring the right hand to the win. But he was able to throw it. See right there, he fell in on the ball and now Castillo's tying him up. He's not able to get off of anything else. The two left hands before he didn't fall in, he kept his distance. Uh, and he was able to find some success. Another straight left down the center. That backed up and wobbled the head on Lenny Castillo. Marcus Brown likely will close to a decision, but if there is to be a subpar performance in a victory, well, this is it. Because as he moves up in rank against the high-level light heavyweights, he cannot afford to have a performance like this. Yeah, he's going to need to just be a little more consistent. Um, maybe not following in on his left hand, so he's able to uh, follow up with uh, you know fast, explosive shots. Be a little bit more consistent in the generalship. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to look great against a guy who's not giving you much, someone who's not opening up, and, you know, seems as if most of the fight is just trying to survive. By the moment, and that ends the fight. Marcus Brown, some respect between Brown and Castile. And I think Brown's disappointed in his performance as well. Welcome back to PBC on FS2. Marcus Brown, Lennon Castillo, go the distance. Caleb, how'd you see the fight? Um, I see Marcus Brown winning. He's edged out a lot of those rounds. There wasn't a whole lot of action uh, throughout the fight, but um, you know, for most of those rounds, I feel like Marcus edged out. Just you know, he was trying to press the pace, make a fight out of it just a little bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Two of the judges scored the contest 98 to 91, and the third and final judge scores it 97 92 for your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Sir Marcus Brown. So Marcus Brown gets the victory.